In today's video, we're going to be checking out this eCoral Light aquarium controller and we're going to be installing it on this tank behind me. Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to another Aaron's Aquarium video. Now it feels like I've not done a video for ages. I've done a few live streams, but no actual videos. So it's about time that I make a start, isn't it? So what we're going to be doing is doing a quick unboxing of this eCoral Aquarium controller, and then we're going to be installing it on here. Now this is going to be my temperature controller amongst other things, but I want to get it on right away so that I can connect the heater to it and start adding fish. So let's do a quick walkthrough of what you get in the box. So pop it open. First thing you get is the controller itself. This is it, this ditty tiny little thing. You'll be able to put this anywhere. This is the eCoral Light Aquarium Controller. It's so little and nice and cute. Now this thing has ports for your lights. It has ports for pumps. It has a port for the temperature probe. It also has a port for a level sensor. It has a port for a pH probe or an ORP probe. And then it has a port here for the USB cable that will power the eCoral controller. You also get inside the box a pH probe. So you don't get an ORP probe in the box, you get a pH probe, but they're supposed to be bringing sort of like uh, additional extras that can link onto the eCoral at some time in the future. So in the box you get the pH probe, which is gonna be great if you've got a calcium reactor, for example, you're gonna be able to sort your calcium reactor out with that, or just simply monitor the pH in your aquarium. You also get a temperature probe to obviously do exactly what it says on the tin, monitor your temperature. Now this is gonna be great for me because I'm using a DD titanium heater. Now these heaters are just on. They don't have a thermostat built into them or anything like that, they're just on. So I'm going to connect that heater to this eCoral and use this temperature, uh, this temperature probe with this controller to help monitor and maintain my temperature. Then we get a couple of packets of pH calibration fluids. So we're gonna be using these obviously to calibrate our pH probe to make sure that it's reading the correct parameters in our tank. And then we've got a power cable. So we've got a power plug and a USB cable to power the eCoral controller. And then finally we have the power bar and yes it comes with a power bar as well so this power bar is pretty wicked really because it is a wireless power power bar so this power bar doesn't need to physically connect to the controller it connects to the controller wirelessly so you don't need to worry about having them in a close proximity you do have to have them in some sort of a close proximity but you don't have to have wires trailing everywhere. Now this has got four plugs on it and two USBs. These USBs are just permanently on. Um, they're not controllable, but the plugs are controllable. So you can use these for all sorts of different things. For example, on the aquarium behind me, I've got the Orphec OR3 bars. Now these bars are just on or they're off, simple as that. So I'm going to connect those bars to two of these plug sockets so that I can turn them on and off with my smartphone. Or connect them to some sort of schedule. I'm going to use another socket for my heater, as I said, because I'm using the titanium one and that one needs to be controlled somehow. And then I'm gonna connect my return pump to this so that I can turn my return pump off wirelessly if I need to for whatever reason. Now, the great thing about these power bars is as well is they don't physically connect. So that means you can have multiple power bars if you want to and connect them to your eCoral controller. And that's something that I may do somewhere down the line as I need more plugs. So there we go. Right, so that's the quick unboxing. That's what you get with the eCoral con uh, light controller. This is 399 pounds in the UK, so it's a steal. Right, let's put this on there and let's get it set up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to need to do is install the app that is going to run this little guy right here. So go over to the app store, the play store, whichever store you've got on your phone or your tablet or whatever it is that you're using and go to the search bar. Simply search eCoral, so E, 
K O R A L, E Coral, oh, R A L, that was better, and then hit search. You'll find the E Coral Pro app. Select that app and install it. Obviously, I already have it installed. Once it's installed, hit open. Now, once the app opens, it'll normally be a blank screen, but I have eCoral products already at home running on my aquarium. So normally you wouldn't see these things, but obviously I'm already running them. But at the bottom of your screen, you'll see this, where the white plus button is. If you press that plus button, then you're going to get a few options. Now we're installing the EK Lite today, not the core and not the doser. So we're going to select the EK Lite, just simply tap on it. Now it says, please ensure that the original USB adapter and micro USB cable is being used to power the EK Lite. Please also ensure that the EK Lite is plugged into the wall and not into the EK Power Light. The EK Power Light is the plug bar that came with this uh, controller. And then it says, power it on and wait one to two minutes until the LEDs are flashing, flashing green. So just on the side of here, I can see a green flashing light. I've already got it all powered on and everything. Just simply plugged the cable into there. So now I know, yep, the green light is flashing and it is plugged in with the original cable. So I can tick that little box thing there and hit next. So it's now going to check the Bluetooth and it's gonna open up the camera. Now what it wants is to see the QR code that is on the back of this EK Lite. So if you just put the QR code in front of it, there you go, you can see, it's now validating the EK Lite. So just wait a couple of minutes while it does this and then it'll move you on to the next stage. Here we go. So you, you put your tank name in now. So whatever you call your tank, if you don't have like a fancy name for it, like I do with all of my tanks, um, this tank, Behind me doesn't have a name yet, so we'll simply call it the water box 100.3. And then we're going to add a little security pin number in so that, you know, nobody can gain access that we don't want to. So I'm going to put mine in one second. Okay, so that's my pin number in. All I need to do now is hit send. So now, obviously saying we're configuring your EK Lite. So give it a couple of minutes again until that is done. So the next job on the list is to add it to our Wi-Fi network. Now, um, it's going to pop up in a minute. You can just see at the top of the screen there, it's going to give us um, a few selections that are available. So choose your Wi-Fi network. So my Wi-Fi network is this one and then you need to put in your Wi-Fi password. Now, I'm gonna need a second because I don't know it, so I'm gonna to have to go over to the router to find out what it is. Okay, so that's my router password in. Next thing we need to do is simply hit save. So that's the configuring done. It's just now saying it's finishing up with what it's doing, and then we should be ready to go. Done, there we go. So that is the EK Lite ready to go. So you can see there, I've got two EK lights, one which is on the one, my aquarium at home, and then we've got the other one, which is the water box 100.3. So we're gonna select that one. So if we just tap on that one, it's gonna open up our EK light. All right, so this is the app home screen. And as you can see at the top, it says pH. Obviously we don't have a pH um, probe connected to it, so that's not a true reading. But you can see below that, you can have a look at your pH over the last hour, you can have a look at the pH over the day, and you can have a look at the pH over the week. And you can do that for the other things that are connected to this e -carl, for example, the temperature. Now you've got all sorts of different devices that can uh, connect. So like obviously you've got your pH probe, you've got your temperature probe. You also have a cool water level sensor that doesn't actually go into the water. It sits above the water and it sends signals backwards and forwards, measuring the distance between itself and the water to check whether or not it needs to top up. And you can also connect certain pumps and certain lights to this e -coral controller. On the next one, we've got toggles, and this is the section that we need to be looking at now because the toggle section is where you're going to add your plug bar. And as if by magic, here it is. This is the EK Power Light. So to be able to use this, we need to connect it to the app. So on the toggle section of the app, hit add device. Now this is the EK Power Light, so that's what we need to select. So we're gonna select that. Now it says here, 
Uh, go to the settings, uh, your Wi-Fi settings basically on your phone and you need to connect to the eCoral and on mine it's the AJ7ACCW127 which is in fact your eCoral light. So if we go to the settings and we select the one that it's asked us to select, we'll connect to it. We're connected. So now if we go back, we're connected to it. So now we can hit next. Uh, did we connect to it? Yes, we did. And there we go. So now it says power on the EK power light and wait until the power LED is flashing blue. If the LED stays lit, please press the power button for five to 10 seconds. So if I just have a quick look, yep, it's flashing blue. So it says here, power LED is flashing blue. Yes, it is. So we'll check that and then we'll hit next. So it's searching for an EK power light and we're gonna call it um, water bot. So we'll call it plug bar one because there's not enough characters for it all. So we'll call it plug bar one. The reason why I'm calling it plug bar one, just in case I decide to add another plug bar somewhere down the line. Hit save. And there we go. So now it's changed and we can see here we've got plug bar one. The LED light on the e coral has changed from a flashing blue to like a pinky color. And now we've got plug bar one. So what we're going to do is now we've got that set up, we're now going to add the temperature probe. And again, as if by magic, here it is. So the temperature probe addition is very easy. If we just go back to our devices and if we go to the EK light section, once we plug in our uh, temperature probe into the temperature slot on the side of our EK light, the temperature section should become available. And there we go. So you can see now we've got pH um, lit up and we also have temperature lit up. So now our temperature probe is now in and it's ready to go. It's ready to go into the tank and start reading our temperature for us. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see it's reading the temperature in this room at the moment at 21.13 degrees Celsius. Cool. Right, so now we need to go back to toggles. So on plug number one, that is where I'm going to put my heater. So I'm going to select one of the options. So let's just go back a second so you can see. So if we go to where it says number one, we're gonna select that and it currently says it's empty. So we're gonna select what we want it to do. So you can see there's lighting, there's water pump, feeder, chiller, heater, power head and others. So we want it to be a heater. So we're gonna select heater. Um, and the default value we're going to set it to is on. All right, so now we've got it set up so that our heater is on. But obviously we're going to need that heater to turn off when we get to the correct temperature in our aquariums. To do that, we need to set a couple of rules. So to set those rules, we need to go over to the control section of the app. Then when you're on here, you can see there's various different options, but the option that we want right now is the rules section. Once you're on this section, you can see here it says click plus below to add a new rule. So we want to add a new rule, so then let's click that. So the first one, we've got the device. And this basically is an if and then scenario. So if this does something, then that needs to do something, that type of thing. So we need to pick the devices which is gonna think so. If this device does something, then this device does something. You know what I mean? So if, the I don't know why it says the one, it should say water box 100.3, but basically if the e coral um, controller temperature, so we'll select the temperature, move this out of the way, confirm, then we need the plug bar to do something. So, you know, for example, if the temperature goes up to 25 degrees Celsius, then we need the, the plug bar to turn the heater off. So we need the temperature first, and then we need the plug bar. So we're going to select the heater, and then that's cool. Okay, right, that's sorted. So we've got if the temperature something, then the plug bar needs to do something. Hit next. Now we've got the rule. So if, so these little arrows mean greater than, greater than and equal to, or lower than, or lower than than equal to. So the top arrow, which is like an arrow facing that way, is greater than. 
The one below it, which is an arrow facing that way with a little line underneath it, is greater than um, and equal to. And then the one below it with the arrow face facing the other way is lower than. And the one below it is an arrow facing that way, which is lower than or equal to. So we're going to select um, greater than or equal to. So we're going to put on here, if the temperature is lower, sorry, is higher than or equal to, 25, 25.2 degrees Celsius, then we need the plug bar to turn off because it's already on because we set it to be on. So we want the plug bar to turn off. So if the temperature is equal to or greater than 25.2, so if once it gets to 25.2 or if it's a little bit over 25.2, turn the heater off. Cool, sorted. Then we'll add an until. So obviously we want to turn the heater off, but we want that heater to come back on again. We don't just want it to go off forever. So we'll set an until. So we're gonna have the heater go off at 25.2, but we want the heater to come back on again. So when the, heat, when the temperature is lower than, we'll set it to 24.9. So 24.9, oops. No, there you go. Um, when the temperature drops lower than um, 24.9, the heater will then switch back on. So that gives us a nice little small window between you know, the heater turning off and turning on, but we've not made it so tight that this power bar is gonna be clicking on and off every couple of minutes, you know what I mean? Because the more that this clicks on and off, the quicker it's gonna wear out. So that's that done. So now we've got, if the temperature gets to 25.2 or goes higher, then turn the heater off. But then when the temperature drops below 24.9, turn the heater back on please. So that's what it'll do. Then we've got um, runtime duration. If I'm honest with you, um, I don't know much about this section. This is a new section for me and I've not had time to talk to eCoral to find out about this. So I'm just gonna set this to five minutes and then I'm gonna set this one to five minutes as well. But it won't let me set it to five minutes. So it says the minimum is 15 minutes. So I'm gonna set it to that. So that's the fail safe. But obviously fail safe is easily explanable, supposedly, but I don't know this section. I've not used this section before. So if we hit save, we're now set up. That's it, we're cool, we're set up. So now we can install the plug bar onto the aquarium, plug the heater in, and away we go. Let's do it. All right, so that is the temperature probe in the sump now. I've mounted the e-coral um, controller to the back of the cabinet and we've got the plug bar on the base just there. And you can see the plug bar is full now because I've got the lights and my return pump attached to the plug bar. Same scenario, you know, just have it as you want it, you know, set it up as I sort of like set it up with the heater, depending on what you want to achieve of it. But that's on now and you can see the temperature is currently 21.13 inside this tank. So the temperature needs to come up before I can add fish. But everything's working, everything's in, it's all sweet. So that is the eCoral Light controller, guys. If, you've been, if you are interested in this, it's available on aaronsaquarium.com right now. Go over, check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you follow along with all of the videos in this series about this Waterbox 100.3. I'll do another video somewhere down the line where I install the pH probe into the eCoral controller so you can see that as well. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, as always, stick them in the comment section. But for now, I will see you all soon.